out there, not from here, rare breed, out there getting clutch buckets. You know what I'm saying? I see you. But in all honesty, the Bucks are ascending. And early in the year, the, the Bulls and the Wizards and those teams got off to really good starts. And the Bucks dealt with some injuries. And, and, and Giannis is now finding his, his dominant footing consistently. I think he leads the team, Jacoby, and this is laughable. In points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. <laughs> okay, like, like that's a real thing. And so when he's out there getting 40 and flirting with a triple-double and playing dominant on their home floor, it, it's a welcome sight. But you know what else? Besides watching the mellow ball do work and Giannis be dominant, you know what just warmed my heart yesterday? I know exactly what you're about to say, Mr. Rose. I know exactly what you're about to say. It's only one word. It's a one word answer. Give it to Boogie! me. Boogie! You saw seven points in his return. Yep. Brooke Lopez is going to be dealing with injuries uh, for the foreseeable future. It was great to see our guy, my guy, JRLA supporter, Boogie, back getting buckets. It was good to see Boogie. Boogie will have a role because, as you mentioned, Lopez is going to be out for a while. But, Jalen, we always say there's no such thing as moral victories, but I don't believe that. Huge win for the Hornets. <laughs> Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champions last night. The Hornets are an up-and-coming team. The Bucks are established. LaMelo hitting that shot, scoring 36 against the Bucks on the road. That was a big game for the Hornets, even in a loss, because they can look at the top of the Eastern Conference and say, we belong. We're not a playing team. We're a playoff team that needs to be dealt with. True story. And if you're them, you're working to be in that six, seven, eight conversation because if you really look at the bottom part of the East, it, it is going to be a crapshoot with a lot of teams. A squad like Indiana never gets discussed, but they're firmly going to find a way to be into the mix. I mentioned Washington, the Chicago Bulls, but if you're the Hornets, you should feel confident because LaMelo's been balling, Rozier's having a terrific season. So yeah, that should be the expectation. Well, two teams that have not performed up to expectations faced off last night. That is Philadelphia and the Celtics. And Ime Udoka had something really interesting to say about this particular matchup over the years. Here is what he said, quote, talking about the Celtics. They <laughs> talked about it before realizing I was going to Philadelphia and made some jokes like, you know, we got mind control over Philly. And Philly said the same mm. thing when I was there. Well... Regardless of who's got mind control over who, like Debo, they faced off yesterday, and it was the Celtics who got the better of the Sixers in this low-scoring affair. What do you think about this game in Boston? I think my brother e -May, friend of the show, my former teammate, his better half is Nia Long. So it's only right that he knows about mind control and Debo. How many times <laughs> you think, like us, he's seen that movie? Like, everybody else has watched the movie. He gets a chance to actually be with her on a day-to-day -day basis. In all honesty, these were two teams, Jacoby, that were like ascending to be in pole position the next few years about who was going to win the East and alternate. And then all of a sudden, the Raptors go and win the championship and add Kawhi. The Raptors win the championship. The Heat win the East. The Nets add a big three. The Bucks win the championship. And both of these teams are like soul searching right now. Yep. And so for the Celtics, I bet when they were in their locker room last night, they said, if we're going to win, this is how it has to be. Playing defense, in particular against a big dominant guy, like Joel Embiid can be. Jason Tatum was terrific offensively scoring the ball. He also had a career high in rebounds. They played terrific uh, on ball D, help side D. They contested the Sixers. And Tatum, when he's efficient as the go-to guy, it just looks a lot different offensively. Now defensively, if you can put the clamps and boxes and elbows on Joel Embiid like they did and frustrate him, 
to, I believe, his worst field goal percentage shooting game of the season. It has me looking at Philadelphia's future, and I'm like, Ben Simmons' sabotage tactic for the Sixers is working. It's working. They're not getting no closer. They're getting further away. Joel just missed a ton of games with COVID, nothing he could control. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that mix of Daryl Morey and Doc Rivers and Elton Brand and like how this collection is going to be basically together and is considered some of the best at what they do, how they now fix this Ben Simmons trade narrative so they can actually have somebody in uniform being productive on the floor. This Sixers team was the number one seed in the Eastern Conference last year, and they look nothing like that now. And again, you mentioned Embiid did deal with COVID. He had a tough bout of COVID. But three for 17, three buckets, three buckets for Joel Embiid against a Celtics team that is not necessarily known for their front court defense. Really interesting game last night and very low scoring. You don't see a lot of 88, 87 games in the Eastern Conference, but it's now turn our attention to the Western Conference where Luka Doncic and the Mavs scored 139 points on the Pelicans. What do you think about Luka? Well, it's going to be hit and miss for the Pelicans every night. I mean, they're playing without Zion Williamson. He was only the number one pick in the NBA draft and a guy that averaged 26 on, what, 60% shooting last year. But Luka was dynamic. He basically uh, had 46 scored or assisted points, I believe, in the first half of this game. And we're always going to look at what Porzingis does because, you know, he's going to be a guy that could catapult them into top four status or lower tier status. But the constants for their team are always Tim Hardaway Jr. and Jalen Brunson. If you really mm -hmm. watch their team play, both of those dudes, I know what I'm gonna get every night. I know what I'm gonna get from Luka every night. Porzingis has to be that guy like you talked about coming into this season, your former unicorn that you spent your hard earned money going to watch the Knicks play. Y'all, they need him to actually be an all-star level player on a nightly basis. And he hasn't been on a nightly basis. He had 20 and 10 last night. But Jalen, we talked about the Warriors and the Suns earlier this week because they had that great game in that matchup. But when you look at the Western Conference in totality, there's a lot of room and a lot of opportunity below the Warriors and the Suns. Look at all of these teams bunched up between 3 and 10. Who do you expect to establish themselves in the upper tier with the Suns and the and, Warriors? And leave that up there for a hot second because it's way too much to remember. The Suns <laughs> and Warriors are in pole position to be the best teams in the league. The Utah Jazz are the next tier of team. Just those three. Everybody else, the Grizzlies without John ja Morant. The Lakers having their issues. LeBron is going to be out a couple of games with COVID. No Kawhi for the Clippers. Dame Lillard is going to be out for the Blazers. I talked to you about how much I love the Surgeon Timberwolves and the Nuggets are without Jamal Murray. So you are right, like Cube said, shake them up, shake them up, shake them up, shake them in the Western Conference. It's going to There's be a, a lot of shoot. opportunity for any one of those teams to establish themselves in the top four and host a playoff series, but we don't know if that will happen. LeBron James is out in the health and safety protocol. We cannot say that he has COVID, but it's a very interesting case there. And Mr. Rose, I expect the Lakers to establish themselves in the top tier. I really expect when they get LeBron back, AD Westbrook, they're going to start putting it together. I still have faith well, in better. this team. I have faith they in you, you said, you said that they would win the they Western better. Conference. How do you feel about that now? I don't like that prediction no more. <laughs> they, they, fl they flirting around 500, family, and I'm going to tell you, hey, you start getting below that equator, I'm saying four below is that equator for me in the playoffs. Because they file five or below, they ain't winning the West, period. Um, so I don't feel as good about that prediction anymore. Mr. Rose, I felt really good about the Michigan men's basketball team when they faced off against the Tar Heels. And then I watched the game. Jalen, are you concerned about Michigan men's basketball? <laughs> 